Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here. We're on the call again today, looking ahead to some key uh, club activity coming up over the weekend. I have three very special guests with me this afternoon. Top left hand side of my screen as I look is Laurie Ryan from the Banner Ladies in County Clare. Sarah Dillon, bottom left, is from Milltown in County Westmead. And very happy to be joined as well by Marla Candon from uh, Belgium, GEA on Crave Rua. We'll play Glasgow Gales in the preliminary round of the current account.ie. Ireland Junior Championship in Maastricht on Saturday, a game you can watch with us on our live streaming platform. I'll pop the link into the description on the various social posts as uh, after we finish this chat. Ladies, how are we all doing? Good, thanks. Good, yeah. all good, good. thank you. Laurie, your memory is better than mine. You obviously reminded me that the last time... Um, it was 2021, because I had a quick check. November 2021, we had a club chat. Sarah was on the call and you were on the call. So take us back to that. You had a black eye at the time as well, Laurie. Yeah, I think we had just played the county final with the banner. Um, and I think Sarah is the same, but it's funny when you got the both of us on, I was actually teaching Sarah, I think, at the time. So um we we both ended up coming on and seeing each other and we were like, Oh God, here we are again. <laughs> and Laurie, where are you full time based now? Uh still lecturing in that loan, so um based up there. So Sarah is still in the college with me, but um she's finishing up now and I don't teach her anymore. <laughs> what a coincidence. And and Sarah, how are how's life going for you in college? You're nearly finished. Are you in your final year now? Yeah, I'm in my final year at the minute. Getting busy at the moment, but I'm getting through it, so not Good. too bad. What, what are you studying? Uh, exercise and health science. Okay, so what's the plan? Have you got a plan in place once you graduate? <laughs> Not as of yet, no. I'm going to take it each day as it comes anyways and see how I get through this last year and see well, where it brings me. And no more to myself, I can see some sunlight beaming in through the window, which is a nice uh, release yeah. from the, the recent rain we've had. Marla, you're in Brussels. What's the weather like? Can you can you see outside in, in that room you're in at the moment? Yeah, we're an hour ahead of you, so it's getting a little bit dark, but it's dry. It had rain there this afternoon, but it's dry. Okay, excellent. Marla, lovely to have you along. Um, we were in touch prior to the call with Sean, who's the PRO in Belgium. You are the chairperson of Belgium GA. And what do you do for a living, uh, Marla, just to, to, to let I'm you know. a vice principal of a European school out here in Brussels. And what does that entail? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, generally dealing with parents, pupils and colleagues. A um, uh, big area of my expertise is... Uh, promoting good behavior or discipline as we'd rather call it. Uh, I evaluate colleagues and help with the new uh, colleagues that we get every year. We have about 20 new colleagues every year that have to be inducted into our system. So there's uh, the job is is varied with many different enjoyable parts. Of it. Good. I get the sense there's a, there's a really good backstory about how you arrived in where you are now, because previously uh, you played club football with Fox Cab in Dublin. And you played county with Roscommon. Um, you first began playing in your mid twenties, making a switch from basketball. Um, so you, uh, how are you based in Belgium, or how did that come about? So I'm a primary school school teacher, and uh, I just um, answered an ad for a secondment. So I'm on secondment over here, and the job has evolved from being class teacher now to a role in management. But uh, I came in September 2015 and couldn't play for Belgian GEA from the beginning because I was still involved with Fox Rock Cabinteely at the time. And we were in the All-Ireland Senior Series. And so I was kind of commuting over and back for the first uh, couple of months. Um, and my last game for Fox Rock Cabinteely was a... Uh, an All Ireland Senior mm-hmm. Semi Final against uh, Emmyvale, which we lost by a point. So uh, yeah, and then as I mentioned to you in uh, email, I've been quietly slipping off through retirement by travelling Europe with Belgium, and it's been really enjoyable. And actually, I don't know if any of the Glasgow girls know this, but uh, we played Glasgow Gales already. Uh, I can't remember if it's 2017 or 2018, but I travelled with the team to play in Glasgow, and we had a, an extremely competitive game. We combined Belgium with Munich at the time. And uh, yeah, they were the victors at that point. Naive goalkeeping, I think, on our behalf, because I think we only lost by a point or two. We had let in some soft goals. And we don't intend to see that happen when they come to us in Maastricht on, on Saturday. So they have been warned. They absolutely have been warned. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're injured at the moment, Marla. I am, yeah. I have a foot injury. Uh, yeah, so I'm very disappointed about that. 
Um, but should the girls get beyond uh, these Glasgow ladies, I would hope to be able to return. Um, that being said, I'm sure the girls, the Glasgow girls have their own injury difficulties. And it's always uh, difficult as well when you're traveling um, to get people to be on board. So each team, I'm sure, are dealing with personnel issues, whether people are sick or un unavailable. But we deal with it on the day and hope for a really good, challenging match. I wish you well, Maren. Thanks for coming on and, and taking the time out this afternoon. The very same to yourself, Laurie. I know you're extremely busy. You're 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 juggling sports and and all sorts. Um, the county final. Tell us, you 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 were unavailable for that for that one. Uh, so um, unfortunately, this year, Claire for like the first time in God knows how long played the county final on a Saturday. Um, and Saturday would be the day that I'd always usually play soccer with with that lone town, um, and I'd be captain of them. Um, but we were in the cup semi final for the FAI Cup up in Sligo and the banner in the county final in Milltown, which was nearly a three hour commute. So there's just no feasible way for me to manage to do both this time. Um, but thankfully, we got two wins. So the banner went out and did the business. Um, so I was frantically refreshing Twitter. And Claire LGFA actually didn't even post a final score. I had to text the group chat. Um, to see what was going on um, after our team talk up in Sligo. So uh, it kind of gave me a, a bit of peace of mind that they had won because cool. um, this was actually, of the last 16 years, this was the first county final that I've missed for the banner. So since we first started playing, we've been in every one. Um, and to miss it was such a horrible, horrible decision. Um, but the, the, the FAI Cup semi-final um, kind of took precedence this occasion and we're lucky enough to be back in the FAI Cup final in three weeks as well. So really looking forward to that. Um, so it's a, a busy few weeks ahead for us. So you're playing the Aviva in that final as well, aren't you? Um, I think it could be Tala. So Is the men it? are in the Aviva, yeah, and um, we're looking to sell out Tala this year. So we got, I think, over 5,000 there last year, and which was a, a record attendance. Um. So that that's fantastic. And I think we're really lucky actually with the club this weekend. Um, we're actually getting to play in Cusick Park, which will be my first time playing there with the club. So really, really looking forward to that. Um, that we've managed to get it. So how look, it's an obvious question, Laura. How are you managing to balance the two out uh, at the moment? Yeah, um, it's fun. <laughs> um, I think you kind of do learn to to kind of manage yourself. Um, I not I can't train every night of the week and play two matches every weekend, but to be fair, they're really accommodating for me. And like I did it with Claire as well this year and Athlone and I did it the previous year as well. Um, it's just when clashes happen, it's a bit disappointing. I suppose it always happens in the big days. I think like there's never a clash of a of a smaller game. Um, like last year it was the Munster Club final and the Cup final. Um, and this year it was the county final and the the Cup semi final. So they probably couldn't have been the worst scenario for me. But um, in fairness, the club have been great and they've been so supportive of me and they know like I literally had a week of sleepless nights after we made the final, hoping and praying that the county board would move it for us. But um. Ah, uh, look, it didn't come to fruition, but the the girls went out and did the business in the end, so it was great. Yeah, I mean, it, it was obviously West Clare Gales were the opponents, and um, obviously they they have a lot of talent in their side as well, Laurie. So, what was the feedback you were getting in terms of the performance and and how the girls went about their business on the day? Yeah, I think um we probably learned a couple of lessons in the semi final. We only beat Kilmaria Bricken for by a point, mm. um, which was probably our closest match in Clare in a long time, and. I think we learned a lot of how we have to defend, um, how we have to move, work as a team and basically like how to work hard on to win your own battle. Um, so I think there was a bit of hiding going on in the semi-final and I think from what I've heard, the girls were just brilliant um, in, in how they applied themselves in the final and they kind of made sure to go out there in the first half and really put their stamp of authority on it um, and control the game from there. I think Laurie, I'm, does previous yeah. experience in a provincial championship account for a lot now as you move forward into into another series of it? Yeah, definitely. Like I think I was only chatting with someone. It's ten years since we actually won our monster title. Um, yeah. so we won it in two thousand thirteen with the club, and we've been kind of there thereabouts every now and then since. Um, so like I think last year was a real step up for us. We were probably really unlucky. Um, in that we lost by two points to Ballymac, and sure I wasn't available on the day. And things happen when you get into monster as well. You lose girls to to other sports and whatever may happen, but. 
yeah, I think everyone has played in Munster Club now with the banner that's that's going forward. And like we've embedded those younger girls in the last two to three years um, that mightn't have had that experience before. So, yeah, it's going to be a real battle. And obviously, we really hope to put it up to Moran Abbey. And it's, it's really nice to actually have it at home as well, which will be a, a, a huge boost for us. It is Moran Abbey, obviously, and they don't need too much of an introduction considering what they've done in recent times, Laurie. Yeah, definitely. Like we've played them, I think five or six times over the the course of the last ten years, and um, we've yet to come out on top in 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 one of those games. But they they have been really really good battles, and I think um they probably got an eye opener in their county final. I think they only won by a point as yeah, well. Very so close. They'll be they'll be on a mission to to get back their monster crown, no doubt as well, because they were overturned last year. So, just really looking forward to the the day occasion and hoping that we perform on the day. Wish you well, Laurie, and um, uh, best wishes with 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 balancing everything out over the next uh, the next few weeks. You've a lot of you've a lot of stuff going on. Um, Sarah, county champions in Westmead, well done. Thank you very much. So you've got uh the not uh too simple task at the weekend of of going up against Kilmacud Crokes in the in Leinster. Uh, Obviously, look, do you get much time to to reflect on a county championship win and 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 then move on into the provincial series? And now what lies in store is obviously a big challenge. The preparation that goes into preparing for a team like this. How how does all of that manage and manage itself or balance itself out? Yeah, it's definitely gonna be a huge task anyway at the weekend. Um we had our county final there two weekends ago. So we kind of were straight in then to play in Tinahili last weekend. Yeah. So it is a quick turnaround. Um we kind of just took one game as it came once we got over the county final back to trend and just kind of focusing on Tina Healy. This week now, obviously, we are looking a bit more into Kilmacud. Um, and obviously seeing the calibre of players that they have, it's going to be a huge, huge task to, you know, come up against them. But we're we're looking forward to it and can't wait to kind of get into battle with them. And absolutely confident Sarah, in their own ability Sarah, as well. Um, oh, yes, Mara, go on. I have a few past pupils on that, that Kilmacud team. Aoife Kane is a past pupil of mine, Julia Buckley. So, but they were they were 12 at the time, so I think things have changed. <laughs> so there's no real inside knowledge you can bring us there. Oh, well, there is, but I'm not giving you any. <laughs> <laughs> there you go now, Sarah. So look, uh, going back to that Tina Hilly game, Sarah, there, there wasn't obviously, there was, there was a fine line to be struck between and we had at Roisin from Boyle in Roscommon on recently as well, talking about you know, how, how they really wanted to enjoy winning what was an historic county title for them but then obviously setting their sights on, on on Connacht as well but it was such a quick turnaround for them so was there a bit of celebrating done or was it straight back down to to business after the county final oh no we, we definitely celebrated it was our three in a row so yeah we a huge one so we definitely made the most of the celebrations and we got straight back into them the Tuesday night um but we still we knew what was kind of coming at the weekend we played Tinahili like the previous year that's right and got a point so like we obviously knew it was going to be again a huge battle um but we we knew that like we can compete at that level so and obviously the girls had the confidence as well and again it was an absolutely huge battle against Tinahili we were lucky you know to come out on the right side of it but um we definitely did our celebrating but we were focused on on the Leinster it's very important to save for achievements like that, as you say, three in a row. It's you have to mark it. Yeah, definitely. For a few of the girls, it's their kind of second time winning three in a row. But those few girls on the team who was their first time winning like a senior championship as well. So it's a huge kind of mix um of players on the team, young and old. So it was obviously great to get three in a row and get the win as well. Yeah, absolutely. Congrats. And um, Mara, do you manage to keep an eye on what's happening? Yeah, I do. Across I do. the club scene, yeah. How, how do you access it? Is it Twitter or X as it is now, or social media, or, or have you? I I try to keep away from those? social media, but I I keep an eye on TG Car and whatever games they might have going, and uh, yeah, the LGFA, whatever they they the streamings that they might have, uh, because I still have an interest in the Dublin Championship, and I'm actually from Boyle as well. I've never played for Boyle, but I would have had an interest there to see how they were doing as well. It's 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 hard because you have to be connected and there isn't as much shown. Uh, but your streaming service really helps us over here uh, across the water. Okay, good. Uh, that's good to hear. Um, Ross Common, yeah. So you played with Ross Common, Marla. What, what... Many years ago. 
So what, what was the extent of it? Was it underage? Did you move on to the adult? No, no, no. Actually, I, I played with the underdogs in 2007 and from that played with Roscommon between 2008 and 2012. Brilliant. I love it. I love getting these little nuggets and sniffers. Yeah, what was the underdogs experience? Time. What was the underdogs experience? I told you I'm retiring like into <laughs> gracefully. <laughs> what was the underdogs experience like? Oh, amazing. Amazing. Because uh, I was teaching at the time. So the kids were watching every Thursday episode and uh, yeah, it was super amazing, especially the army experiences. And we got to play uh, in New York in uh, Gaelic Park against the New York All-Stars. So and it was Thanksgiving. So, yeah, it was deadly and we won. <laughs> Yeah, because we, we've all seen the All-Stars, Laurie and, and, and Sarah as well. The, some of the, the, the personal stories that emerge are just so, so powerful and inspirational. What's it like to be involved in in a group of, let's call it, disparate people who just come together and, and they're looking to get on that team and on that squad? Or, I yeah, mean, look, there's obviously a real social, social aspect to it, but there's a competitive feel to it too that you really want to get on this team. Yeah, it's intense and it's over a very brief period of time. And actually that 2007 underdog team uh, had quite a few uh, players then who went on and uh, played at, at county level. So we obviously had caliber that was there. But yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say I, I've kept in touch with a few of the girls and I watched some of their careers. But yeah, it's intense. And once it's done, it's done and people move on. So what's the trip like for for the team? On Saturday, uh, where, what what kind of areas and regions are you pulling players from for to, to play for on Crave Rua, Marla? So we would have a huge mix of players. We have uh, Greek players, South African, uh, uh, Spanish, and then we've quite a good calibre of like an ex Kerry County player, an ex Kildare County player, uh, girls from uh, Waterford, uh, from Dublin. So it's it's a mix of previous talent and then like emerging talent girls like there's one girl in particular she's Belgian Colombian and she's a natural like she's a, a natural athlete and has taken to the sport and uh, is very passionate and you'd never tell that she only picked it up say three years ago wow Laurie sounds like a, a nice potential teaching assignment down the road huh? <laughs> you'd be welcome anytime Laurie <laughs> there you go now <laughs> Myself and Sarah I'll go over on a college. It's a junket. <laughs> <laughs> and Laurie, so obviously it's it's and we've mentioned them. It's more Abbey. Um, you you can't get too bogged down in the name and the history and the stature that they have. You know, you you as you say, you've played them enough times before to know what they're about. Um, you have very very talented players in your own right. It's a, it's just a case of trusting your own ability, getting out there and trying to get a performance. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think probably to our benefit, a lot of the younger girls are so unaware of like um who more Nabby are just out of their nature. They don't keep up with it maybe the same way we used to. Um, so they kind of are fearless in a way, which it's nice to see that from the younger girls. And it's probably a thing across most clubs um that they, they just kind of go out and try and enjoy themselves um and it nearly rubs off on you then to to be like you really need to just appreciate the fact we're there and just try to perform as a group and when you're enjoying it as well it makes it a bit easier to to pull together as a, as a group and 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 really try to get that over the line together good stuff one to keep an eye on and Sarah your, yourselves as well as I say lots of talent in that team as well from from a Milltown perspective you'll be confident to give a good account of yourselves yeah, definitely. We'll give it everything that we can anyway. And same that Ari said, there is a few of the younger girls as well, you know, that aren't kind of having been following kind of club kind of scene earlier on and um like don't like haven't really heard about Kilmacud. So like obviously there is that level there of like, you know, we just want to go out, give it our best and you know, we're lucky enough we actually got a home home game as yeah. well. So, it's a good yeah. local interest in it, um Sarah. Yeah, definitely. Like we were lucky enough to get to the Healy game at home as well. And, you know, it was we brought a huge crowd. So, you know, it'll be the same again at the weekend. Everyone will be out to support. And we are probably going in underdogs, you know, in a way. Um, so we'll just we'll give it our best shot and hope for, hope that it goes well for us. Underdogs is fine, isn't it? You'll take that mantle gladly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Marla, what's the, what's the interest like in, obviously it's the first game of the All-Ireland Series. So it's nice in that sense of kicking off the All-Ireland Series as it is and, we might see Laurie and, and Sarah perhaps in the All Ireland series down the line as well. Um in terms of, of getting to Maastricht and, and all of these logistics, how does all of that work? 
So uh, we don't have a regulation-sized uh, Gaelic football pitch accessible to us in, in Belgium or in Brussels. So we have to go to Maastricht and the Maastricht Gales are very nice. Tony Bass, a shout out to him. They help out with getting the, the pitch sorted for us. But actually, it's where we play all our home games uh, when we've had these matches in the past. So we play tournaments up there as well. Uh, it's about an hour uh, drive from Brussels, even though it's in the Netherlands. Um, so it'd be very familiar to the girls. We know the changing rooms, we know the layout of the pitch and how long it takes to get there and so on. Uh, but we play nine aside uh, generally. So the 15 aside game is new for a lot of uh, our, say, continental players. So that's something for them to adjust to. But we played uh, in Wren, a uh, preliminary round of 15s in Wren three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Uh, where we had we traveled by train to Ren as a team and it was a very good bonding experience and uh yeah we had a nice weekend together um out there and came out came victorious as well great stuff so we look forward to all of that action coming up over the weekend um we also have uh there, there there's loads of stuff going on at the weekend with their senior action as well in Connacht um over the weekend the St Nathies again from Sligo take on Lockmore from Mayo in a semi final and the champions, all Ireland champions of the Kilcarran Clonburn against Glencarran Manor Hamilton from Leitrim as well. So plenty to look forward to. Um, all getting underway on Saturday. Um, number of 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 games, including that one between on Crave Road from Belgium and Glasgow Gales. So we look forward to all of that. Laurie Ryan, Sarah Dillon, and Marla Candon, thank you so much for your time today. Really enjoyed the chat and best wishes for the weekend. Thanks. Thanks so much, Jack.